Welcome to Ozarks Fox News at 9. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jennifer Abreu. And I'm John Adams. We will get to your local news here in a moment, but we're starting off tonight with some top stories from around the country. These stories are real new now. Multiple celebrities have been charged in what authorities are calling the largest college admission scam ever prosecuted by the DOJ. Actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin are just two of the over 50 people charged in a bribery scam to get their children into elite colleges across the country. The actresses were both arrested this morning. Brexit is voted down again. This is the second time a British Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit deal is voted down by lawmakers. They will now have to figure out whether to leave the European Union without a deal at all or to delay the split. And American diplomats in Venezuela are leaving the country amid a growing political and humanitarian crisis there with food and water shortages and power outages. Nicolas Maduro says the United States actually attacked the country's power grid. US, U.S. officials say the power outages are the result of years of neglect to the Venezuelan energy system. Well, new at 9 tonight, the public was invited to ask questions and give your opinion on using more renewable energy here in Springfield. Our Frances Lynn attended City Utilities public hearing tonight at the library station. Frances, what was this meeting about? Jen and John, this was an informational meeting without any formal presentation to talk about the future of our power supply. City Utilities currently uses about 40% renewable energy and is one of the leading cities in Missouri in renewables. At this meeting, they have information about what resources we have today and what we'll need in the future. Leaders at local renewable energy companies talk about not only the environmental benefits of renewals, but also the economic benefits. We're calling for such a, such a quick transition to renewable energy because we don't have much time left and we want to make sure that we preserve the planet that we're on. Wind has become ex exponentially cheaper than coal, than nuclear, even solar. Uh, the fact that city utilities has invested so heavily into wind is not because they're looking at some environmental value to it. They're looking at it because it's going to be able to bring uh, rates down. Now, Francis, tell us a little bit more about the uh, current coal power plants here in the city of Springfield. So renewable energy experts say the plants are getting into our water supply and the coal ash has toxins that damage our nervous system and is especially dangerous for kids and pregnant women. Wow. Thank you, Francis. Well, in a local interest story now, a peaceful protest is scheduled later this month in the trucking industry that dozens of drivers are expected to participate in as a response to what they call over regulation. Our Jesse Inman is live tonight. Jesse, what should we be expecting when this protest actually takes place? Well, John, I caught wind of this entire organ this kind of uh, this in protest, I should say. I caught wind of this through a man named Bill Bogar. He's with a group called Black Smoke Matters Missouri. And here's what he told me they're going to do on March 27th. They're going to start down in Joplin. And they're going to go about 40 or 45 miles an hour in the right lane, and they're going to slow roll their way along this stretch of I-44 all the way up to Stratford, then turn around and go back again. Now, Bogar says that there are quite a few issues that drivers have with today's industry standards that they would like to see changed, but specifically devices that are in almost every truck called ELDs, or electronic logging devices. They keep track of hours of service, speed, location, among other things. And Bogar believes that they are a distraction, uh, distraction, as he says they cause many drivers to try to race against the clock to avoid penalties. If you're an owner operator and you have, you're, you're facing something holds you up and you're facing up to a five or six hundred dollar fine now, um, that's basically your profit on the load. And then you're now you're racing the, that GPS and you're racing your, your um, uh, e log as well. It's a dangerous situation. It's, um, it's distracted driving at its finest. Now, I also spoke to the director of safety at Prime Trucking, Steve Field. He says they do back the electronic logging devices, but he acknowledges that the industry standards as a whole should be changed when it comes to hours of service. They can be detrimental. It tells the driver when to drive and it tells them when to stop without taking into account how the driver truly feels. Is he tired? Is he rested? But before we can make meaningful changes to the hours of service, we need to have good, accurate data of what drivers are doing. 
And that's what electronic logs will do. Now, while Black Smoke Matters Missouri does hope to call attention to those issues, this is also kind of a precursor to a nationwide protest coming on April 12th, where they will also look to get some attention on those same issues. And Bogar estimates some 30,000 drivers will take part in that strike, which will last just one day, which he says will have big ramifications to many companies across the country. In Springfield, Jesse Inman, Ozarks First. All right, thanks, Jesse. A story to follow up on. And making local news now, an accident in Springfield today is sparking concerns on what to do if you're stranded in your vehicle with active power lines. Police found a man in a car suffering from a seizure. The car hit at least one truck before traveling through more lanes of traffic and then hitting a power line. Now, police say the driver's injuries are non-life-threatening. So what if this happens to you? According to the city utilities, if you're the driver and your car is covered in power lines, you need to stay in the car and get as much attention as possible, honk your horns, and then call 911. But if you're a bystander and you see a car covered in power lines, you need to stay back and help by calling in emergency professionals. Finally, you should know down power lines should always be treated as live. They can energize up to 35 feet of their contact point, making it extremely dangerous to even walk toward this kind of situation. Also making local news, the former Central Bible College property in Springfield has been sold. The president of the auction company told us the entire property was purchased by Good News Church. Now that church operates in L.A. and New York. They say the property will continue to be used as an education facility. The Illinois-based auction company has been handling the sale of the property since October of 2016. Monette police say a student at Monette High School has been arrested after making a threat to the school over social media. 17-year-old Alejandro Gonzalez is charged with making a terrorist threat in the first degree. This happened yesterday. Officers found brass knuckles on Gonzalez along with spent ammunition. The school was placed on lockdown for an hour as Gonzalez was taken into custody. The school was also searched, but nothing was found. Gonzalez is currently being held in the Monette Justice Center on a $10,000 bond. We have a traffic alert for you now. Starting tomorrow, eastbound lanes of Highway 60 will be narrowed to one lane in Texas and Wright counties. MoDOT crews will spend a week flushing bridges through two parts of the highway. One lane will close in Texas County from Route MM to Route 181, and one lane will also close in Wright County from Route E to Route 95. You can see it right there on the screen. Crews will work from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. throughout the week at both of those locations. Drivers, drivers, of course, should use caution when traveling through that area. In political coverage now, Missouri lawmakers and business officials are teaming up to study the possibility of connecting Kansas City and St. Louis with an ultra high speed hyperloop system. So we're a state that has the uh, ingenuity, technology, the resources uh, to look at what's next in the future. And I think this is an exciting step to try to figure out what the process is about, what we have to offer. This technology involves a tubular track through which a train-like pod carries passengers at speeds up to 640 miles per hour. This is not cheap, though. Some est estimates put the cost at 25 to 27 million dollars per mile. A panel to lead this effort was announced today. Members will present their findings by September. Well, let's hope they come to the show me state. Well, in regional news now, city council members in Joplin were caught off guard last night when the city manager suddenly resigned during a closed door meeting. Sam Anselm was appointed city manager in 2014 after serving as assistant city manager. City officials have not released why he resigned. An interim city manager has been appointed to fill that gap until they find someone else. In national news now, a video that has gone viral. We're used to seeing horses at the rodeo, but we're not used to seeing horses on the highway, especially not like that on a truck. Well, a Texas woman caught this unbelie unbelievable video, a horse riding in a truck bed, apparently at a high speed. One witness told police the driver was going 70 miles an hour on the highway. The horse did not 
look spooked. He did. He looked healthy. He actually he looked like he was enjoying the wind blowing in his in his mane. I wouldn't do that with my dog. Um, put in the back of a truck on a highway with the bed down like that, let alone a horse. Police say the man wasn't doing anything illegal. Police say the driver was on his way to work at a livestock center and he claimed his truck that can pull the trailer wouldn't start. So he did this as an alternative, a move that makes some angry while others are understanding. Police say the horse is now safe.